country mourns passing of Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare. Tears and more tributes from leaders. And Australia extend condolences to Somare family and PNG. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Friday's news. Papua New Guinea today is paying tribute to Papua New Guinea's founding father, the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare, and in its front line is incumbent Prime Minister James Marape. The Prime Minister acknowledged that Cabinet met today and announced a two-week-long period of mourning begins forthwith, declaring Monday, March 1st, a public holiday and Friday, 12th March, the last day of mourning. And at Cora reports. It comes with great sadness today as Prime Minister James Harper stood with NEC members to formally announce anticipated arrangements for PNG's first founding father, the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Sumare. The Prime Minister fought back tears at a news conference today as he announced dates for the period of mourning and public holidays that would coincide with a formal state funeral program. He declared March 1st as a public holiday as well as Friday the 12th of March, which would be the last day of mourning. Uh, cabinet today classified uh, the next two weeks of uh, mourning as a very significant national event. And uh, we've designated that uh, starting today, the moment or the day he, he passed on, and from today until the 12th of March 2021, be a period of, in which the nation uh, stays in mourning the loss of the founding father of our nation, our first prime minister, the Prime Minister who took our country into independence at 1975. A national organizing committee led by himself, the Prime Minister, have convened and will be liaising with members of the Somara family and the East Sipic Provincial Government to tighten up on events leading up to the funeral. And so he deserves a full concerted uh, effort by national leadership and all instrumentalities of government to ensure his final moments on the surface with us is given due respect before he's finally rested. And on behalf of all the regions of our country, uh, we have ministers who will be in this Council of Leaders, uh, Minister Kua, the Honorable Minister Karanga Kua, the Honorable Minister Soroy Eoi, the Honorable Minister Brian Kramer, and the Honorable Minister Walter Snowbelt representing our four regions and governors, the Honorable Seipadas, the Honorable Sir Julius, the Honorable uh, Chris Aveta, and the Honorable Peter Yama. And of course, the East and West Sipix uh, will be led by Governor Baird and all ministers and members of the East and West Sipic. This will form a core body of national leaders who will be on standby and assist uh, to ensure that the progression of the house cry or national mourning is done uh, befitting of uh, the great man, the father of our country. Declaring also that marking the Grand Chief's passing today will be a national day of remembrance in the country's national calendar. He further announced that the Sir John Guy's indoor complex will be the center point for NCD residents to pay their respects. Additionally, March 11th has been designated for all schools and institutions nationwide to be central locations where communities can gather to pay their last respects. Sir John Guy's indoor sports stadium as a place of uh, a central pivotal point in Port Mosby City uh, uh, and for us to sit and as I said in a normal traditional Melanesian style of house cry, befitting passing of a great chief. And uh, that will become a point of reference for us in the, in the nation's capital. But we've also allowed for our different provinces, in fact our 20 provinces, our nation's capital district, as well as our special region of Bougainville, to tailor specific programs if they feel befitting to ensure that the provinces take responsibility in the two-week period in paying respect to the father of our nation. 
With the national flag flying at half mast at Independence Hill, today is most likely to be the biggest moment in the country's history as far as loss is concerned. The Prime Minister appeals for calm and due respect from citizens across the country. Somare was in the thick of things, in fact, the leader of every event that took place cascading in Independence in 1975. He deserves all our utmost respect, and I thank the nation so far. At one, 10 past 12 last night, or early this morning when he passed on, since then the nation has been in total respect. There has no disruption. The nation, and from all indications I've received from right throughout our country, uh, we have come in mourning, in peace and serenity, in accepting passing of the father of our nation. Enet Kora, National MTV News. The founding father of Papua New Guinea, the man who led the country to political independence, Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare, passed on at the age of 84. The Somare family released a statement announcing Sir Michael's passing at 12 a.m. this morning. The statement said Sir Michael was a loyal husband and great father first to his children, then grandchildren and great-granddaughter. Sir Michael, a man of many titles. He was father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. As a tribal leader, he was Sana, the peacemaker. His influence and his reputation extending beyond Papua New Guinea's borders to the Pacific and other parts of the region. With his passing at 84, Sir Michael Somare has left an incredible legacy. 49 years in politics, a total of 17 years as prime minister, spread out over three terms. The state of Papua New Guinea bestowed upon him the title of Grand Chief in later years. And ordinary Papua New Guineans called him the father of the nation, Papa and Tumbuna. From the earliest years of his leadership, his family had to share their father with the rest of Papua New Guinea. And just after midnight, the eldest of the Somare clan, Bertha, sent out a statement announcing their father's passing. She said Sir Michael was a loyal husband and father and that they were endeared that many Papua New Guineans equally embraced Sir Michael as a father and grandfather. The Grand Chief was diagnosed with late-stage pancreatic cancer and was admitted to hospital on the 19th of February. Michael Somare was born in Rabaul, East New Britain on April 9, 1936. His father, Ludwig Somare, was one of the first policemen in the colonial territory. He attended high school in Finchafen, Morobe province, and later went on to work as a teacher and broadcaster. During the 1960s, the young Michael Somare became increasingly dissatisfied with Australian colonial rule and the racial discrimination. He and other like-minded people began pushing for independence. He attributed his entry into politics to the former Maprik MP, firebrand politician Sir Peter Luce. In 1972, during an era that saw a strong push for decolonization worldwide, Michael Somare was elected chief minister. I was disliked by some. Most people disliked the idea about becoming independent. But I said, listen, only by learning and the process that we're going through, we can understand better and make our country a better country. Three years later, in 1975, he led the country to independence when he became Papua New Guinea's first prime minister. I never thought, you know, by forming the first political party that we would be able to see, uh, see it through. But then when I know that I had a lot of support from young Papua New Guineans, I thought, well, I think we should be able to make it. Sir Michael was a pivotal uniting force in a very fragmented country. He was able to bring together the four regions and people who spoke close to a thousand different languages, a multitude of tribes, some of whom were forced to transition from the Stone Age into the age of artificial intelligence in less than half a century. In politics, Sir Michael was a master tactician, highly skilled in managing volatile political landscapes on multiple fronts. He survived many instances of political turmoil and retired in 2017. As a regional leader, Sir Michael was the longest serving. In many instances, seeing the sons of those he served with take on leadership reigns. And while Papua New Guineans have accepted that this day would come, 
many are still coming to terms with the news. Scott Whitey, National MTV News. The East Sipic provincial capital, Wewa, closed most of its major businesses, schools and offices from the provincial government departments today in respect of the passing of the Grand Chief. At the provincial government office, both the PNG and East Sipic provincial flags were lowered to half mask must to mark a sad day for the country. In WeWork Town, banks, the main market, shopping centres and PMV operators all reported closed for business today. Meanwhile, the road leading into the residence of Sir Michael at WeWork Hill has been temporarily closed. Representing the people of East Sipic, Governor Alan Bird passed his condolences to Lady Veronica and the children. Governor Bird said PNG must celebrate Sir Michael's life and honour the things he dreamed for. He spoke to reporter Tekla Gunga by phone this morning. Uh, Tekla, first of all, I think, you know, obviously, uh, we grieve with uh, the family of uh, the late uh, Sir Michael Thomas Murray. Uh, Lady Veronica and, and all the children and grandchildren. Um, I think there's not a dry eye in Papua New Guinea today. Everyone is, is, is grieving in their own way. Uh, I think what's fitting is that we should celebrate his life uh, in, in, in our grieving and honor the things that he lived for. Um, he dreamt of a united Papua New Guinea. He worked for that most of his life uh, and I think he on his passing, it was something that he still held dearly to himself. And he was a father to everyone. And I think uh, I want to thank uh, Bertha Sumare for acknowledging that and, and all the children, you know, for sharing uh, your father with all of us. Um, uh, but on his passing, I think it's important that we remember what he stood for, the things that he lived for and fought so dearly for, and, and to honor all of that by, uh, you know, being unselfish in, in, in our grief and uh, to contribute to uh, the dream that he tried to build and, you know, succeeded in building and something that we still have a long way to go in, in completing. Uh, so I think that's, that's the message uh, I'd like to say to Papua New Guineans is, you know, let's honor this great man, a man who came along, you know, once in a hundred years uh, to do what he did for our country and work that still must continue and that it's now incumbent upon all of us if we feel grief for this man that we should continue to work towards uh, achieving what he wanted for this country and we wait for news of you know what's going to happen over the next uh, uh, couple of days in relation to his uh, funeral arrangements and everyone to remain calm and, and to wait for uh, the advice coming from the appropriate authorities as they discuss with the family going forward. Thank you. You're watching National MTV News. More tributes to Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back. PNG senior statesman Sir Peter Bata has described Sir Michael Sumara as a remarkable leader in PNG throughout the Pacific and internationally. Sir Peter Bata says Sir Michael is one of the few people that stood up against prime ministers and presidents. Senior statesman Sir Peter Bata described Sir Michael as one of the few incredible and remarkable Papua New Guineans. He's a true statesman. He's uh, been a remarkable person, a remarkable leader, not only in Papua New Guinea, but through the Pacific and uh, internationally. He's one of the few people who can stand up against uh, prime ministers and queens and presidents, and he's been uh, respected. He's given so much credibility. Sir Peter was working with the Catholic mission in Isipik, when he first met Sir Michael Somare, who was working as radio announcer. And then he went on to being a journalist and uh, then to uh, school teaching. And uh, he spent some time in Medan. Uh, at Rye Coast, he toured. And then he took it to himself to take up the drive to become independent. Mm. 
he had a marvelous team behind him. In fact, uh, I've just picked up a photograph of Tony Vutis and uh, other people that have played such an important part of his life. They became close friends, a friendship that lasted 50 years. Sir Peter Bata had named one of his hotels in honor of the Grand Chief's father. Sir Peter served in the Somare cabinet. For 50 odd years that he's been involved with politics. As I say, I served under him as a minister. Um, I've been with him when he's been disposed of as a prime minister, and uh, I've had to share the grief and the sorrow that he's had to, to share. Uh, I've seen him in so many ways uh, share his uh, passion for Papua New Guinea and passion for people in Papua New Guinea. Uh, just even walking around the streets, people come up and want to shake hands with him. Sir Peter expressed grief of the time when Grand Chief was hosted as the Prime Minister in April 2011 by Peter O'Neill. I would like to pass my uh, sincere condolences to the family, uh, Lady Veronica, the children, the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. I've shared a, a lot of my life with the Samaris. Martha Lewis, National MTV News, Medang. And there has been an outpouring of grief in Morbe as senior leaders expressed sorrow over Sir Michael's passing. Close friend, schoolmate and former Morbe Premier Sir Jerry Nalau said the Grand Chief was a great man who united the nation. He said he lived by his traditional principles where he gave everything to his people. Former lay MP Bart Philemon, who shed tears, encouraged the current leaders to continue Sir Michael's legacy and to stand united for PNG. This morning, said Jerry Nalau, recounted the fun <laughs> moments with his old friend. Somebody called me Kiam, called me Kiam. Long talk, I've been Kiam in dog. So I didn't know or Kiam, I'm somebody. As young boys, they went to school in Dregaf and high school, where a lifelong friendship began. Said Jerry is a year younger than Sam Michael. He was saddened by his friend's passing. So time me me arrive me die me kiss him picks up on me play long stop yeah me look him I must twenty six close you up all the happiness now so more than me give him half yeah say more kiki say Joseph Nombri Bill Warren Lucas Walker Donald Sigamata Cedric Taboa and more kiki me. Olympians, Jakarukuru, I'm only the Princess Nemian. I'm now somewhere in the I'm also close to some 14 old Olympians. Let me play some play stuff. The friendship between Jerry Nalau and Michael Somare began at Dregafen. One went on to become the Morbid District Commissioner and the other the Prime Minister. Said Jerry was his most trusted officer. I got the commission alone in 1976. I go and uh, look and plan this something. People on simple islands only believe long things happen. Long on him. Talk talk long go there. Anu to anu to anu. Somebody tell Sarah Jerry Nalau go. Mister Labuka, the president commissioner. Sorry, me go. Time me come up to Simbu. You guys all look like yet. Some balloons go up and down. Means you know, Kundia Kundia all look down. Run Kundiawa along Bougainville, and they go along Kundiawa. 13 hours, this is three, round, round, round. The then chief minister sent him on the most difficult assignments. Said Jerry Nalau later became one of the first Papua New Guineans to become a district commissioner when powers were transferred from the Australian colonial administration to the new Papua New Guinea government in 1975. He was sent to Kundiawa in the Simbu province as part of the Somaris administration's effort to help unite the new country of PNG. The 83-year-old knight described the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare as a simple man with a big heart. Somare is a sepik man. All the sepik, me plan to say, plan to Somare. Simple man. 
uh, everything is in his palm and give him, give him, give him. What can I say? My heart is sad. This morning in Butibam village, the former treasurer in the Somali-led government, but Philemon shed of, tears when he got the news. Uh, the history that we set in peaceful transition between ourselves and the Australians. Yeah. Mr. Philemon met Sam Michael when he was a student at UPNG. Later, he served as a member of the Somali-led government. It wasn't until 1992 that I was able to get into politics and I stood as independence from Malay. I didn't know what party to join. And then I had a choice between Chen, Wing T, Somare. And eventually when I went to parliament, I then decided to join, not member of Pangu Party, but part of Somare because of his leadership and his uh, knowledge and experience in managing politics in PNG. But Philemon was elected to the Morobe Provincial Assembly from 1984 to 1988. In the 1992 general election, he was elected as MP for lay to the national parliament, a seat he was to held for 20 years. And if I can remember Somari and those early politicians, then I say they were the ones. Uh, and um, we as new leaders have to learn from them. Yeah, because unity cannot be accepted for granted. It has to be earned. And it's earned through type of leadership that Samara has shown us. Yeah, sorry, I... Uh. The two Morobians passed their condolences to the Somari family, especially to the wife of the Grand Chief, Lady Veronica, Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lei. New Guinea launched its inaugural flight Boeing 737 to Gurney Airport in Milne Bay province today. There to meet the guests, Alatao MP Charles Abel took the opportunity to pay tribute to the founding father. It is a very sad day today in Papua New Guinea. It is a very, very sad day here in, uh, in Milne Bay. And I also take the opportunity on behalf of the leadership of our province and the administration and all the people of Millen Bay express our sorrow, deep felt sorrow and condolences to the family of uh, Sir Michael Thomas Somare, the father of this country, this beautiful nation of Papua New Guinea, this young nation who passed away last night around uh, midnight and we are all of course in deep uh, mourning and that is the shadow that is hanging over this occasion here today and across our nation. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison has, on behalf of Australia, extended deep condolences to the Somare family and the people of Papua New Guinea on the passing of Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare. The Australian Prime Minister said Sir Michael was a towering figure in the history of Papua New Guinea. Passing of Sir Michael Somare, the first Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea. He is, has been, over the course of his amazing life, the champion of the sovereigns, sovereignty and independence of the people of Papua New Guinea. I consider the people of Papua New Guinea our family, always have. I have been in contact this morning with Prime Minister Marape James, my very good friend, and passed on to him and to Lady Veronica our deepest condolences and sympathies for the Papua New Guinean people. There will be great mourning across Papua New Guinea, from the lowlands to the highlands, to the villages, to the cities. Sir Michael was an extraordinary man of his generation. He was the light of his generation, which has lighted up the path for Papua New Guineans today and into the future. And so I just want to honour him in his passing and reaffirm Australia's great friendship, more than friendship, our family relationship with the people of Papua New Guinea. New Ireland Governor Sir Julius Chan has expressed deep sadness at the passing of his close friends and ally. Sir Julius sent his condolences to the Samara family in a video sent hours ago. Sir Julius served as the first Deputy Prime Minister in 1975. And now looking at the Nasfund market report, the Kina opened unchanged at 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market this morning. 
At Bank South Pacific, Yokina will buy 0.2775 US dollars, 0.3473 Australian dollars, 0.3721 New Zealand dollars and 28.82 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher, coffee and copra closed lower and cocoa closed higher. Palm oil closed lower, crude oil is trading higher and copper closed higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading lower and the All Ordinaries is trading lower. National MTV News continues with more after these messages. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. A New Guinea's Boeing 737 took its first flight to Gurney Airport, Alatau, from Jackson's Airport, Port Moresby, today. The aircraft could carry more passengers and freight than any Fokker aircraft. With its huge capacity, it will be able to help boost the tourism industry in PNG, as the Milne province is one of the main tourist destinations in the country. Gethard Gabi reports. This is the first time for any New Guinea's Boeing 737 to land here at Gany Airport, Alotau, Milne Bay Province. The flight was welcomed by member for Alotau, Charles Abel. The aircraft was flown by Captain Moses Padigaga, First Officer Benis Watinga and team. It will carry up to 144 passengers per flight, with 16 in the business class and 128 economy compared to the 101 seats in the Fokker 100. On behalf of the people of Millen Bay, the political leadership and the administration of Millen Bay gives me great pleasure to welcome this uh, inaugural flight, the first time ever for a Boeing 737 to touch down here at Gurney Airport, hopefully one day to be Gurney International uh, Airport. The aircraft has been flying to Mount Hagen since the airport's upgrade in 2020, and this is the second province in the country that it will be operating in. And Air New Guinea aims to make it more affordable for the people. Gurney is the second domestic airport that we're operating the 7372. We operate it up to twice daily into Mount Hagen now into Gurney and we'll be extending it out into uh, Manus as well. This will assist greatly in meeting the demands of passengers in and out of Alotau and the uplifting of agriculture and marine produce from Alotau to Port Moresby and will help boost tourism for the country in the long run. We've got many resorts, we've got World War II uh, history sites, we've got some of the best diving in the world and beautiful culture. On board the aircraft was the first officer's father, Tom Watinga, who was so proud of his daughter. Mr. Watinga and other passengers commended Air New Guinea on this milestone and recommends that they keep their airfares at an affordable price to attract more customers. Hopefully, Papua New Guineans will see it and uh, we try to get on it and make it economically viable so that we can sustain it. I feel that uh, it should fly often from Port Mosby to Guinea and back. Uh, and this is my first time on the flight, so I'm very much enjoying the trip. And the member for Alotau encourages all to use this opportunity to travel into Alotau and experience the best that they can offer. Getrud Gabi, National MTV News. National Weather Service Acting Director Jimmy Gomoga says we are currently in the peak of the wet season and we have three months left of rainy weather. Although the northern parts of the country are expected to be in drier conditions, the Papuan and parts of the Highlands region are to expect average rainfall conditions. We are now in the, in the peak of the wet season. So we have, the wet season has just peaked, like I said, around January, February it peaks. And then it begins to uh, uh, drop. drop, yeah, drop back to uh, to the or go towards the uh, start uh, changing towards the dry season. Yeah, so it has just peaked, and uh, we will see eventual uh, reduction in the in the uh, in the activities across across the uh, uh, across Papua New Guinea. 
Um, but like I, I said, we're in the, in the peak of the wet season. We still have about three months left. And uh, you know, we still have that uh, uh, remaining parts to be actually expecting more rains to, to be coming. You're watching National MTV News. Up next, some sporting updates in Chukai Sports. Don't go away. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. As the SPPNG hunters left our shores for Queensland last week, the PNG and Australian government strengthened the sporting links between the two countries with the signing of a sports partnership agreement paving the way for future elite sporting cooperation for PNG athletes. Sporting ties between PNG and Australia have been strengthened with the signing of a sports partnership agreement between the two governments. Prime Minister James Morape signed the agreement with Australian High Commissioner to PNG, Jonathan Phelps. The agreement covers the assistance given to the SP PNG hunters regarding two technical officials who will assist them with marketing and professional career development. We're very proud to be able to support the hunters as a real high performance team taking place in sport in Australia and Queensland. We'd love to see also the PNG women's rugby league team and just look forward to finding a women's team playing in Australia as well in the future. And the Prime Minister and I were just discussing his aspiration to see perhaps for 2025 and Papua New Guinea's 50th anniversary a Papua New Guinea rugby team playing in the NRL in Australia. It would be a great ambition to have and something to hold in front of us. And I can promise that the Pacific Oz and the PNG Australia partnership will be with you in trying to push for that. The ability of the hunters to leave the country and relocate to Queensland for the entire Intra Super Cup season was made possible under Visa Class 408, with the Hunters franchise now an Australian registered entity. At the back of uh, PNG Hunters leaving Port Mosby for the first time for a long term resident of uh, stay in Australia, a uh, partnership that is uh, maturing to a level where it's unprecedented before in as far as uh, uh, having us building a sports team. Uh, to be based in Australia for a longer time. Uh, under Visa 408, our Hunters franchise is now an Australian registered entity uh, in Australia through that, through that arrangements and through very strong partnership at the highest level with the Australian government, uh, the Queensland uh, state government, uh, supported strongly by the local Australian mission here in Port Mosby and PNG. Uh, we've now been able to advance our uh, relationship and especially in the sporting fraternity to a level where we're now building team, assessing them in Australia for them to participate. That is a pathway for uh, Papua New Guineans who want to be in the field of sports. Haxte Lovai, Chukai Sports. And that ends Chukai Sports. There were the details after the break. Chukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Mostly fine with cloudy periods in Port Moresby. Cloudy periods with a shower or two in Daru, Kerama and cloudy periods with evening rain shower or two in Alotau and Popandita. In the Mamasa region, cloudy with some rain showers in Leh, cloudy with occasional rain showers in Medang, Wewak and Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, cloudy periods with few showers in Lorengau, cloudy with some showers in KV and Kokoporobao, Cloudy with rain showers and possible thunderstorms in Kimbe. And in the Highlands region, cloudy with evening showers, rain showers and morning fog in Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundi, Awamendi and Wabeg. 
there is a renewed strong wind warning current for southern PNG Indonesian border to Daru and Hood Point and Aroma Coast from Finchhafen through Vitiaz and Dempia Strait to CRC and Long Islands, including Western Solomon Sea and Eastern Coral Sea. Strong northwest wind surge of 25 to 33 knots are expected to continue for the next 24 hours, causing rough seas. All small crafts and boats are advised to take necessary precaution before going out to sea, especially over the warning areas. Forecast for small crafts for the next 24 hours, waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait to Daru to Kiwai Islands and Kerama to Yule Island to Hood Point to Aroma Coast to Samari Islands with the waters of Finchhafen through Vitiaz and Dampier Straits to CRC and Long Islands including waters of waters north of Long Island to Medang and we work to Aitape and Vanimo also including northern PNG Indonesian border and with waters of West New Britain seas of 1 to 2 meters waters of Samari Island to Cape Vogel and eastern and western Milne Bay Islands including waters north of Cape Vogel to Huon Gulf to Fenchhafen seas of 0.5 to 1.3 meters Waters of Manus and its western group of islands, seas of 1 to 1.5 to 2 meters, and waters of New Ireland to East New Britain and Bougainville, seas of 0.5 to 1.5 meters. A look at the Asian forecast for PNG areas in the Coral Sea, seas moderate to rough with west to northwesterly winds at 20 to 30 knots. In the Solomon Sea, seas slight to moderate with west to southwesterly winds at 10 to 20 knots, reaching up to 33 knots towards the west. In the Bismarck Sea, seas moderate to rough with west to northwest winds at 20 to 30 knots. And in the Pacific Ocean, seas slight to moderate with northwest to northerly winds of 10 to 20 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. And that's been the news, sport and weather for Friday 26th of February 2021. On behalf of the MTV News team, pleasant viewing, be safe and bye for now.